Chapter 10 Race to the Moon The U.S. and USSR were on opposite sides in the Cold War. They were against each other in another way, too. Each country wanted to be the first to send a man to the moon. This was called the space race. In 1960, President Eisenhower started the Apollo space program. And when Kennedy became president, he went on with it. Kennedy thought it was very important for the U.S. to be the leader in the space race. He wanted to show the world that the U.S. was a great and strong country. It cost billions of dollars to send a man into space. On the 25th of May, 1961, Kennedy gave a speech to Congress. He said that it was very important for the U.S. to win the space race. By the end of the 1960s, he said he wanted to send a man to the moon and back. He asked Congress for $22 billion for the Apollo space program, and Congress agreed to give him the money. On the 12th of April, 1961, the Soviets sent a man called Yuri Gagarin into space for the first time. Kennedy was worried that the U.S. was getting behind the USSR. He thought that perhaps the Americans and Soviets could work together, and he asked Khrushchev about this at the meeting in Vienna in June 1961. But Khrushchev did not want help from the U.S. He did not want the Americans to learn about the work that the USSR was doing on space travel. So he said no. On the 12th of September, 1962, Kennedy made a speech at Rice University in Texas. He told the people why the Apollo space program was so important for the U.S. He said, we choose to go to the moon and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. On the 21st of July, 1969, nearly six years after Kennedy's death, the Americans Neil Armstrong and Edwin Eugene Buzz Aldrin became the first men to walk on the moon. So the U.S. won the space race. But Kennedy did not live to see it happen. Chapter 11 The World in Shock Kennedy started many good things, but he was not able to finish all of them. In November 1963, he and Jackie went to Texas for a political visit. On the 22nd of November, they were driving through the streets of Dallas in an open car. Kennedy and Jackie sat in the back, behind the governor of Texas, John Connolly, and his wife. The driver and another man sat in the front of the car. The president's car drove very slowly through the streets. Everybody wanted to see the good-looking young president and his beautiful wife. Crowds of smiling people stood on both sides of the streets, waiting for Kennedy and Jackie. At about 12.30 p.m., the president's car entered Elm Street. Suddenly, the crowd heard loud shots from a gun. Two bullets hit the president, the first in his back and neck, and the other in his head. 
one bullet hit John Connolly. Kennedy was very badly hurt. The presidential car drove as fast as possible to the Parkland Memorial Hospital. But it was too late. At 1 p.m., Kennedy was dead. While the car was taking Kennedy to the hospital, the police were busy looking for the killer in the buildings near Elm Street. They entered a building on the corner of Elm Street and Houston Street. In one of the rooms upstairs, they found an open window and a gun lying on the floor. From this room, you could easily look down into the street where the president's car was driving. Seventy minutes later, the police caught a man called Lee Harvey Oswald. Oswald was twenty-four years old. He said that he did not shoot Kennedy. But the police did not believe him, and they took him to the police station. Two days later, the police were getting ready to move Oswald to prison. A large crowd was waiting in the police station to see him. When the police brought Oswald out, a man pushed to the front of the crowd and shot Oswald dead. This man's name was Jack Ruby. The U.S. government asked the Warren Commission, a group of senators and lawyers, to find out what happened. After some months, they decided that Oswald killed Kennedy and that he was working alone. But not everyone believes that. How could a man like Oswald, a nobody, kill the president of the U.S. without help? Many people think that Oswald was working for someone else. But who? The Soviets? Castro? The CIA? There are many different ideas, but nobody will ever know for sure. The only man who knew the true answer, Lee Harvey Oswald, is dead. Jack Ruby is also dead. He became ill in prison and died on the 3rd of January, 1967. Chapter 12 The Years After Kennedy was president for only about a thousand days. His death was a terrible shock for people around the world. Many saw it happen on TV. A short time before his death, Kennedy was happy and smiling. Then, in a few seconds, the U.S. lost a fine young president. After Kennedy's death, Lyndon B. Johnson became president. He went on with Kennedy's work for equal rights. In 1964, there was an important new law which gave black Americans the same rights as white Americans at work, in schools, restaurants and hotels, and on buses. Many black Americans started going to university, and some got good jobs in law and government. On the 20th of January, 2009, Barack Obama became America's first African-American president. Others from the Kennedy family became famous too. Kennedy's sister, Jean, became U.S. ambassador to Ireland. Kennedy's brother, Robert, was a U.S. senator and U.S. attorney general from 1961 to 1964. His youngest brother, Edward, Ted, was a U.S. senator for 47 years. After Kennedy's death, 
many people admired Jackie's quiet courage. In 1968, she married Aristotle Onassis, a Greek businessman. After he died in 1975, she returned to America and got a job in New York, where she died in 1994. One of the gardens at the White House is called the Jacqueline Kennedy Garden. Caroline Kennedy is Kennedy and Jackie's only living child. She is a writer and lawyer, and in 2013, she became U.S. Ambassador to Japan. Caroline and her husband, Edwin Arthur Schlossberg, have three children, Rose, John, Jack, and Tatiana. People think that Caroline's older daughter, Rose, looks very like her famous grandmother, Jackie. Kennedy's son, John, was killed in an accident in July 1999 with his wife and his wife's sister. He was flying a small plane, which crashed into the sea. Things did not always go well for Kennedy. Sometimes he had terrible problems because of his back and other illnesses. But he never felt sorry for himself. He made some mistakes, like the Bay of Pigs, but he did his best to learn from them. There were other problems, too. He liked women, and women liked him. After he married, he had some relationships with other women. Sometimes this made things very difficult for his government. But people remember the good things about Kennedy more than the problems. He was a strong, intelligent leader with a lot of courage. He kept the U.S. out of nuclear war, and he tried his best to bring peace to the world. People remember John F. Kennedy not because he was good-looking or charming, or because he was a war hero, or won a Pulitzer Prize. They remember him because he was a great president who believed in a better future for the world.